How unsatisfying to play and have absolutely no audience there. Absolutely. <laughs> it's weird. Beautiful. Um, so very thoughtful, colorful, shapely playing, you know, very sort of mature and very nice to listen to. Thank you very much. Um, and um, I think that, you know, the way you, you generally pull the sound from the violin is very natural and that's really nice to see and hear because it it's allow, allows the violin to really sound and you're doing it the easier way. Um, the couple of things, see, I always had this problem when I was studying about playing Bach was that like I was never able to just find my own way. I was, everyone was just criticized endlessly and then you never, you know, it's like, why are you doing it this way? And then difficult to find your own way. So I'm gonna just make some suggestions and ask some questions and then you're free and entitled to do exactly what you want because we should be free, you know, it's not so. For me, when I was studying, this was like impossible to do right. There was no way to do it right. I was all, only criticism. So I, I try and get away from that with, with, with when I'm teaching Bach because it's so easy to just stamp all over someone's playing rather than bring out the nice stuff. So a couple of questions. The violin loves contrast in the amount of bow. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Boom, boom, boom. So that's bow speed. So in the, in the one semi-quaver, you got slow, slightly faster, slightly faster, very fast. Mm -hmm. And the other great double whammy of doing that is that you create direction, but you don't rush because boom, 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 rather than using the same amount of bow, boom, 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 boom. It's maybe just a little bit too aggressive. Da, da, da. <clears throat> it's very angry. Are you angry? <laughs> You can throw all of this stuff that I'm saying away. I'm just going to say, why, if you want to throw it, can this not have some reaction? There's one idea. It's just basically. to give more later in that bar. Yeah, so you always have to be giving yourself some slack so that you can pull more. Not always be operating on the limit. Explain to me why he, Bach wrote that shape of melody. I mean, musically, you need to explain to me when you play why he wrote that. I mean, did it go? If, sometimes the way you play it, you go, you don't acknowledge that shape. So it kind of should go or something, but it doesn't. Yeah, 
you have to imagine when you're playing, if you were improvising this, firstly, congratulations, what genius you are. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you were improvising it, how would you play it? Why would you do that pattern of notes and not acknowledge it? If you were improvising, making it up, you would definitely do something with it. Mm -hmm. No? encourage my my lot to imagine that they wrote the piece and they take the glory and uh and just there's a a reason in great music like this which is behind every note you know you can't say oh well, that that note would be much better if it wasn't there it it's all brilliant right there's a purpose for every part it goes up it, co it goes up in 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 tones and then my semitone. If he were, in, we play it differently from. Yeah. Or whatever the notes are. So if you, it's really useful sometimes to actually, in your practice, have the confidence to muck around with the notes, to think, oh, what would it, what, how would I play this? if it did something different, because it can really clarify to you what actually you're supposed to do, yeah? It doesn't go... It's different from... And it's that reach, it's like a, a music reaches, and how hard does it have to... How, how much energy does it need to expend to reach that interval? Mm -hmm. So this, it's like a cup of tea's over there, rather than a cup of tea's over there. Yeah? <laughs> Unexpected. Yeah. So that that for me is a really good way of of confirming what we're supposed to do with the material because we we've, we've got to do something with every note because every note is, is amazing. It's not and it's not necessarily doing something to the music. It's just that. It needs to be alive. Every note needs to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got a gravitational pull. You know, when you throw something in a certain way, you know when you throw it, the curve, because you can feel the weight of it. You know, you can you know if you throw something that weighs one kilogram at that energy, you know it's gonna trace a path through through the air and land in a certain place, right? Mm -hmm. It would be very strange if you threw it and it suddenly f flew way further than it's supposed to or didn't stop going up. You know? So the same thing with music. We throw bom, bom. We throw a note and catch it. It's got to go. Mm -hmm. hmm? Let's try. string mm -hmm. like this we have we can voice these chords mm -hmm. like i was talking to um i've forgotten her name i'm so sorry um earlier that's the important part it's not
bottom and leave it. Not unless you want to, unless you've got feeling like you can do it, but not every single one. Yeah? So it's that flexibility to think, okay, where's the voicing of this chord? I'm gonna just almost like pluck the bottom of the chord with the bow and, and express on the top or something. Yeah? And it, it, I would recommend that you do a couple of days, it's really interesting, a few days of practice in the lower half, because this is what we've done, you've just been doing that at the frog. Yeah? You practice, I mean, you know, if you don't trust me, do just a section. But see how you feel <laughs> after a few days. You don't play normally. You slower practice, lower on the bow. So halfway point is your tip. Okay. Yeah? You relax, you drop, you use your fingers. That You never go higher than halfway. Just pick a section. And it, it has really interesting... If, uh, um, what's the word? Results. Yeah? <laughs> That, I mean, I, I don't practice. When I'm practicing, I practice in the lower half. Mm. And I work out how to play the damn piece in the lower half. And suddenly, when I release myself, okay, I move a little bit higher. I don't move into the safe zone, which is the two thirds up the bow where everyone plays when we haven't worked out our bow divisions. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I worked out how to play with less bow, lower, relaxed, and then it's, it's sort of sorted out. So mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. A section as an experiment, mm -hmm. and then if it works, you can do it for the rest of the piece. Okay. All right. <laughs>